Before we start, do subscribe and hit a like button. It really helps with the algorithm. Thank you. And now. Story time. Until now, I had no idea what crawlers were. This happened in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan in winter 2015. It was around Christmas time, so we had lots of snow, and it was very cold minus 25 Celsius. My dad was driving my sister and me to the small city that we live near. It was only 6 p.m., but it was already dark. We only live about 10 minutes out of town, so it's not like we were in the middle of nowhere. However, the two-lane highway is unlit and very dark. I was in the back seat, my younger sister in the passenger seat. Suddenly, I noticed something in the headlights. Something ran across the road in front of us. It was so fast that my dad didn't have time to break or react, and then it was gone. What the heck, my dad's eyes widened. I couldn't believe what I'd seen. It was almost dog-like, or maybe more like a deer, but certainly wasn't either of those things. It was a dark blur. It looked like a lanky humanoid, but with very long limbs and ran on four legs. It was about the size of a large dog or small deer, but its front and back legs bent like a human's arms and legs. I was too stunned to say anything. All I could think was what the F did I just see? My younger sister looked at my dad and then at me, her mouth wide open. You guys saw that too, she asked. I nodded, eyes wide. We spent the rest of the drive feeling uneasy, my dad speeding faster than he usually does. I was so relieved when the first street lights appeared in the city limits. We still bring it up to this day, still as confused and spooked as when we saw it. Does this sound like a crawler? This happened to me while I was in college 20 plus years ago, and I never forgot it. It was one of the first times I ever remember seeing true fear and panic on someone's face. This part will only spatially make sense if you are familiar with Monterey, California. I lived in the seaside area, and my college girlfriend lived in Carmel Valley. Sometimes when I would drive her home late at night, we would take a lightly used roadway called Laurel's Grade, which was long, dark, and full of winding turns. It also let us out near her house so it was a minor time saver. We were driving home late one night, and we were chatting and laughing about something or another, as we usually did on the ride when she looks out the window, stops mid-sentence, screams, then looks forward and yells go go go. She is terrified. I floor it, and ask her what is happening, and she won't talk she is literally next to me hyperventilating. I drove unsafely fast through the twists and turns of the road, and a few minutes later slowed down, assuming that whatever scared her was fast in our rear view. By this point she is calmed a bit as well, and I ask her again, what happened? Her first reply was, you didn't see it. She then proceeds to tell me that as we were driving around a corner, she was looking out the window and my headlights lit up a human looking animal standing along the side of the road disjointedly on all fours, with a human-looking face that looked like it was hissing. My first reaction was that it might actually be a hurt person, and maybe we should go back or call 911. But she was adamant that no, it was not a person, and there was no way we were going back. We got to her house a few minutes later, and out of extra precaution called the local police, and asked them to go and check the area. We never had any follow-up from them. Fast forward several years 15 or so, and I was telling a co-worker who was from that area about the incident, she got really spooked, and when I finished she told me that Laurel's grade was known for strange sightings, and is a spot that UFO fanatics tend to go to I'm not a UFO guy which I thought was interesting. I live very close to a town in Northern Ireland, except my house is behind a park. Therefore you wouldn't really know you're in the town, and there's a lot of trees and wildlife. It's very private and secluded. I regularly go through the park as a shortcut at night, when it's closed, and there's no one there, 
which as a female is quite dangerous I know but so far I've been okay. Last summer, I climbed over the gate as normal, and starting walking my usual route over the hill. Except I suddenly experienced what I can only describe as the like a massive surge in adrenaline, which literally made me freeze on the spot. It was like an eerie, evil feeling that creeped over me, and I felt so exposed and vulnerable. It felt like something was going to jump out and attack me. I have never ever had this feeling in my life, only I can only compare it to how an animal feels when it's being hunted as prey, mixed with the feeling of pure evil during sleep paralysis. I quickly scoured my eyes over the hill, and stopped dead on some creature that was walking casually over the hill. It locked eyes with me and suddenly stopped and sort of crouched down like a tiger about to pounce. The creature was like a mixture of what I can only describe as a human and a wolf. It was like a massive dog, with its shoulders far higher than its hind, and a long sort of body. It had big long forelegs which has sort of a knee bend like humans and shorter hind legs. The head of the creature was like a wolf with a pointed nose, and it was like a dark grey color and hairless. The thing that stood out to me was its eyes though. They were massive and round and glowing like a bright orange. It actually looked like its eyes were on fire, like glowing ember orbs. When it saw me, like I said it crouched down and froze, and we had a stare off for a few seconds, while I fully prepared for my death, until I turned round and ran for my life. I jumped over the gate and looked back and saw it running on all fours across the hill like it wanted to hide. With its long forearms it looked like a human running on all fours. The feeling was so, inhuman, even ungodly, and since that day, it's safe to say I haven't ventured into the park at night again. My older sister is a through hiker and goes backpacking often. We grew up in Appalachia in a very remote area. Growing up poor we spent a lot of time camping, and now that we're older she lives closer to home and regularly goes camping with my parents. We've had our fair share of bear and wildcat encounters, but nothing like this has happened before. Today I called out of work with a stomach bug. I woke up from a nap, and my sister texted me asking if she could give me a call. I live about 5 hours away so I immediately said yes fearing it was an emergency. When I answered I could hear her footsteps, very fast, and her hurried breath in the phone. She said that she was in a ridge taking photos of a cave system, she found near a large rock formation. When she made it to a clearing, she heard a man call her name. It echoed through the woods. It was then that she reached out to me. While I was talking to her I could hear my dad's voice in the background. She said that she was still an hour from her camp. When she said she was alone, I felt the iciest feeling down my neck. I asked her what the man's voice sounded like. She paused and said, it sounded like several voices at the same time, but the loudest sounded like dad. I stayed with her on the phone all the while hearing something that was trying to sound like my dad. He's a lifetime smoker and very tall, so he has a low booming voice that I have always found comforting up until now. When she got to the campsite, I told her that I was hearing it the entire time, and thought he was there with her. She laughed and thought I was trying to tease her. But once she believed me, we were both rightfully spooked after that. My dad is very much alive and well. I posted this to another subreddit, and was told to go here. How she can protect herself while she's alone in her tent tonight. I told her to sleep in her car. I'm not sure if this is the right place to post this, but it's been freaking me out for the past few days since it happened, and I wanted to see if anyone had any advice. I want to start by saying that everything I'm about to talk about is true, and if you don't believe me, I'm sorry. I live in the woods in northwest Ohio. My house is about half a mile back in the woods down a long driveway, and my property is surrounded by trees from each side, except for the back which has a field that alternates soybeans and corn every year. We're a few minutes away from a very small village, and about half an hour from bigger towns. 
I just wanted to give some background into the area before I say what happened in case that helps at all. I've had weird stuff happen before. I've encountered what I think are not deers. Once there was one in my yard walking around apple trees, which isn't uncommon, but the thing was huge and ugly, and it just looked wrong. There was also one next to a country road, I was driving down with my friend once. A few years ago, I was dog sitting before I had a dog, and I was out with the dog walking near the field, and he turned around as there was a huge splash in our pond and started growling and howling. Other than that, the dog was really friendly, and I'd never heard him growl before. I joked, saying it was a frog man, like the Loveland frog man, but ignored it for the most part. Last year, my family got a dog of our own, and he's a hound dog, so he chases and barks at everything. But sometimes he gets weird about the pond too, and he'll growl and howl at it. He doesn't really growl other than that. But the incident that I came here to talk about happened a few days ago. This year is a corn year in the field behind our house, which I always hate because I can't see out past the first couple rows, and I've always thought it's creepy. Before crops are planted, I like to rock hound and metal detect in the field and surrounding fields, so I know the land very well. I have found Native American artifacts in the field before too, and there are a couple of woods scattered throughout the fields, and a big creek runs through it too. I mainly stick to the field directly behind my house, because I don't want to wander out too far. The farthest out I've gone is probably no more than a mile. A couple of days ago, I was out with my dog, walking along the line of dirt between the trees in the back of my property, and the field when my dog started growling at the corn. It obviously scared the hell out of me, and I was yelling at him, telling him to stop. When I was little, we would get coyotes around there too, so I figured it was a coyote. Since I didn't want myself or my dog to get hurt by the coyote, I started walking back to the house, but my dog wasn't having it. He was pulling on the leash and baying and howling and losing his mind. He doesn't usually bay and howl like that unless he's treat a squirrel, so the fact that he was just screaming into the corn freaked me out. We started walking again, and then I heard a cat meow from the corn. I was like, oh, okay, it's just a cat. Cool. But I have a cat, and there are plenty of barn cats that cross our property, and my dog has never lost his mind over a cat like that before. So I keep tugging on his leash, and I'm like, dude let's go, you're freaking me out. And the cat keeps meowing, and it's getting uncomfortably loud for a cat meow. It sounded like it was a lot closer than it was. And then the cat started growling, but it sounded like a big dog. Like big growls. Then the corn started rustling, bigger than what a cat could do. Luckily, at that point, I was just about back to my yard, and the growling kind of developed into what sounded like a yell and scream from a person. I was dragging my dog. My dog was growling, his hair on his back was sticking up. I was scared and shaking. It was absolutely terrifying. I went back into my house and told my family what happened. And they were just like, okay, cool, whatever, but I was nearly in tears. It was scary. Again, I don't know if this is the right place to leave this story, so I'm sorry if it isn't. But those sounds have been replaying in my mind over and over. And I'd love to get some explanation or something on whatever happened out there. Nothing like. That has happened since, not that I wanted to. But yeah, if anyone has any explanation or advice, please let me know. I'd say this happened close to 12 years ago, when I was about 16 years old, living in North Las Vegas. To this day, I've never had such a thing happen to me again. But it's a moment that I will never forget, and I figured I'd share it with you and the other listeners. I'd like to add that I'm somewhat of a healthy skeptic, and not really religious, though I am open to the idea of higher powers, anomalies, etc. My older brother and I were at a house party, and when the time came for my brother to leave I insisted on staying, knowing that I'd have to walk home eventually since he was my ride. But mind you we didn't live very far maybe a mile or two. 
Fast forward to me leaving, and I was on my way home. I had a nice buzz, but I definitely wasn't impaired to the point of having my vision or motor functions affected in any way that I can blame that is. The streets were wide and almost no cars to be seen. I know as a woman it's different, but as a guy, I actually took comfort in cars passing at this time because of that small window. If that makes sense, I felt I wasn't alone walking when they were passing. The journey was eerie, but I made it to the entrance of my neighborhood. Unfortunately, my house was basically at the opposite end of this winding road, yet still a straight shot so I had just a little ways to go. But nonetheless, I knew these streets and safety was on the horizon. The houses are fairly sized, and as I'm walking down the sidewalk, between each house there's basically an alleyway of darkness. In the day it would be a walking path, perhaps to the backyards with you know, electric meters on the walls of the house and AC units. Anyways at night, these alleys are almost pitch black when you look far enough. As I'm walking down the sidewalk I can't help but glare in between each house and start getting in my head and tripping myself out from my imagination. I try to slow my roll mentally since I am alone and stay on route. No cars have passed in a while thus no comfort. I continue like this down the street until my house is finally in sight down the way. Obviously, I felt a bit better with my destination in view. Then a car comes north from the direction of my house, and I'm on the right-hand sidewalk with the road to my left, so I thought, sweet. Another human to see me home be it, for just a moment. It was when this car passed me, and after the flash of the headlights, I saw what I saw. Already looking towards the street after the car passed on my left, something grabbed my attention in the corner of my eye crossing the street towards me. The street lights were those yellowish ones so the street was lit just enough. At first, I thought it was a dog so I glanced directly at it. And what I saw initially, if I had to describe it, was what almost seemed to be a black silhouette of a little boy trotting towards me. I don't know if you saw those typical little statues of toddlers like in a garden section of a store, curly hair, and all on a swing or whatnot. But if I had to describe the black silhouette it resembled that little boy. I'm an avid gamer so I'd assume I know when to lock in. So when this thing caught my eye, I raised a brow after the car passed. It was when I did a double take to confirm. That is when I freaked. I remember turning directly towards it after the glare of the headlights. For but just a second or two, enough for me to analyze. There it was a shadowy little boy trotting towards me with no features, around two half to three feet tall. The moment, and I mean the moment, I consciously accepted this was happening, I gasped, already turning my body, and yelled as I took off a full sprint toward my house. I kid you not, it felt like I was passing a house every two strides. I never ran so fast in my life. As I was running, trying to collect myself, I literally reminded myself what I was running from mid-run and yelled again and turned on the turbo. I just felt like it was right behind me up until this point. I was already running as fast as I could, but my survival instincts said otherwise. I never looked back once. I ran all the way to my house and, thank God, they left the front door open for me. I slammed the door behind me. And there was my dad and brother, still awake reclined and watching TV. I'll be 29 this August, yet I remember this night vividly. Gives me chills recalling this moment. It was the third day of February 2012, in the Brazilian state of Rio Grande. My sisters, my mother, and I went to have some fun on a beach very far from our home. Our mother had rented the house of a friend for a few days, which we used while going to and coming back from the beach. It was one of those very dirty beaches where trash was dumped all around, and not that many people were going to it. But for us, it was very fun. I even remember joking with my sister that there are probably sharks on this beach. It was pretty hot too, and I have the skin of a vampire. So after the first day on the beach, I was looking like Mr. Krabs and I had to stay in that house while they went to have fun, which for me was okay. I'm kind of introverted anyway. One day, 
My mother and my sisters, except for the youngest one, all had to go to some specific place. One went to color their nails, the other went to have a massage. Two decided to back to the beach, and my mom was going to go to a club with her friends. My young sis went to sleep and basically, it was just me in this two-floor house, which was way bigger than the home I was raised in. The place was kinda creepy, and it did not help that the moon that night was full. I was a young and stupid child who was scared by the creepy night, and also full of energy. So I jumped over the fence of our house by climbing over it. My thoughts at the time were stupid, I was going to look for my mom. I did that without thinking about stuff like the possibility of me getting kidnapped or killed by some robber. This was Brazil, after all, street crime is high as hell here. Anyway, I walked a little bit around the town, but then realized I was lost. I was utterly overwhelmed by the same modern buildings, and I had no idea of where I was. I also had no idea where my mom was. I knew where she went, but I did not know where that was. After the fear of being lost fully took over, I decided to give up and go back to the house. But I didn't know where the house was so I walked around. There were very few people at night, and I was just too anxiety filled to ask any who I saw for directions. Eventually, the road mixed with this path of dirt. It sort of looked like the path in front of the house, so I thought I was in the right direction. So I walked, and I found a beach. Not the beach where I went with my sisters, but a beach. But little me did not know that. So I ran to the beach because I thought that I could find two of my sisters there, and they could bring me back home. However, they were not on the beach, but something else was. This beach had those rocks leading up to outside the water. You know those spiked rocks that normally sink ships. One of them was all the way into the sand. I kept seeing something moving beside it from the corner of my vision, so I just looked at the rock. Then something came out from beside the rock. This thing seemed to be the size of an adult man to me. It stood straight, it had legs and feet, but it wasn't human, and the biggest proof was the left arm. You know centipedes, those black things with a thousand legs. His left arm was like it. The thing extended to the ground, and it moved like it had a life of its own. I could see all the little legs moving. The whole body was weird, not just the centipede arm. You know that green guy from Nightmare Before Christmas. This man was kind of like that, but made of skin, and with an egg-shaped head. I don't know what the man did after he saw me because after seeing him in the clear moonlight with the ocean backdrop, I was absolutely terrified, and I just straight up bolted. I ran away as far as I could from that beach, without looking back. Eventually, while running in the path of dirt, one of my sisters found me. It looked like they had been looking for me for a while. Once we got to the house, I got scolded by my mother who was angry as a devil with me for running away. She thought I would get kidnapped or something. I did tell this story to my sisters. Obviously, they found it to be unbelievable. In fact, the only one that believes in it is the youngest, but she also believes in all that witchcraft stuff, so I guess her belief is already wonky. To be clear with you, I don't believe in the supernatural, like werewolves, Bigfoot, greys, and all that. I think all of it is a conspiracy theory and stupid beliefs based on zero proof. But to this day I believe that man thing to be real. The memory still is very vivid in my mind. On the last day of my camp retreat in northern Wisconsin in Taylor County, me and my friend were walking up to our cabin to get our sweatshirts because it was chilly. My cabin is in the middle of two other cabins next to the woods. It is a public campsite and people come and go as they please. The woods we are next to go on for miles and miles, and no people are living in there as far as anyone knows. So me and my friends proceed to the cabin, while the rest of the campers and staff are walking back from night games. When we reach the top of the hill, we take our flashlights out to see where our cabin is. When I reach for the handle of our door, my friend says, hey, that looks like a guy. While pointing to the woods, I turn to see that there indeed was something that looked like a person. We chuckle, 
thinking it's part of a tree, but we start to notice that it is a humanoid figure watching us. Its height was abnormal, maybe six or seven feet tall, it had long human-like arms, its body was grayish, and its neck was white. We look at each other, shocked, and start to back up slowly, while still shining the flashlight on the creature. The creature slowly raised its arm and moved toward us, and that's when we booked it down the hill. Later on that night, the staff patrolled to make sure nothing else happened around the campus. They came back to our cabin while I was calming down my friend, and told us that they saw some movement near our cabins, but he couldn't tell what it was. That night still haunts me to this day. Before the retreat, my brother noticed something peeking through the main cabin window, but before he could get a good look at it, it backed into the darkness. He only got to see its eyes, and they were far from human. My brother's close friend even heard something trying to mimic the bullfrogs while he was in the porta potty. And when it showed up, all the birds and frogs went silent. On the first day of our retreat, me and my brother also heard a loud dog-like growl. No one on this earth can make a sound as real as what we heard, and no dogs to be seen anywhere. I indeed am a Christian so it could be a demon, but I'm still wondering what this thing is. I'm an indigenous Australian, female, and 38 years old. Due to colonization I'm obviously not what one would consider a full blood, but nevertheless I identify as indigenous. I grew up hearing stories about Yowies and hairy men. Yowies are small meerkat type creatures and hairy men are what would be considered a Sasquatch type creature. When I was 17 years old my cousins, of similar ages, and I would go and spend holidays with family in a town with a large population of indigenous people. Not gonna lie, we were there for the boys. This one particular summer night we had decided to walk into town. Where our family lived was maybe 2-3 kilometers out of town, but the road was a highway that was lit all the way, and had a cemented path all the way from town which ran alongside a cleared field. The grass wasn't mowed, but it wasn't what you would say was overgrown. Just at that in-between stage of being mowed a few weeks back. So we started our trek home at about midnight that night. There were four of us girls. Two in front and two in back. We got about 100 meters out of town when my cousin the front pair looked up and noticed what looked like a large man with a long black coat and hat, walking towards us about 150 meters ahead. Now the path like I said was a straight shot with street lights the whole way along. We hadn't been drinking or smoking anything. We paused and were like, who's that? We stood there debating whether or not to continue. The whole time I didn't take my eyes off this person. As my cousins glanced back and forth during the debate, we all stopped talking once we noticed that this man had all of a sudden turned into a type of haze and fog. Picture it like someone blurring out a person in a photograph, like it was out of focus, but everything around was clear as day. All of a sudden this man was now a little creature. It was hard to estimate its size, but I thought it was similar to a meerkat or a large rabbit up on its hind legs. It was looking straight in our direction. Then after 5-10 seconds it hazed over again and completely disappeared. We all saw it. And we all still talk about it to this day. I'm pretty confident that it was a yaoi and little hairy man. There are different theories in the indigenous community about them. Some believe they live under river beds, and some think they live inside cattle. Some people say they lure little kids away into the bush. It should also be said that I'm a fairly pessimistic type of person. Up until this point I had never really had anything like this happen to me before. I posted this a couple hours ago, and someone told me to look into crawlers. If anyone knows if a crawler would target a person or people please tell me. I'm thinking if it is there's something in my area drawing them here. I always have an uneasy and malicious feeling whenever I go to this one line of houses behind some trees that surround me. Here's the original post. 
So I've had a slight problem around my house for a bit over a year. I'm in a southern town in Michigan, and I live right next to the woods. My house is less than a meter away from the trees. I'm surrounded by it for nearly a mile on each side, if we're not counting the road. Last year in October I was outside with a couple friends at about 11 p.m. at night. We were near a park down the street, and suddenly a large black mass comes out of the darkness. It was a dog I figured, but oddly tall. About up to my shoulders for reference I'm 5 foot 6 and stood about 6 feet away. It had a deep bark, and we of course ran. This happened for the next few nights anywhere near the park. The only time I saw its eyes was the last night. They were green and reflected like a lamp. May I add every time this happened it didn't matter if we literally had a light straight on it, we couldn't see its features or anything. The park is fairly well lit too. Another odd instance was when my friend and I were on a walk again about 4 am in December of 2020, roughly a couple months after, and we had sat down at a mailbox. I had a bad feeling and felt the need to go back fast. But my friend needed a break we had been walking for a bit, so we didn't go. Less than two minutes later, we hear this human-like scream from all around us. It sounded like it was traveling in a circle getting closer. It had a gurgling and odd tone to it, that made me think it wasn't human. Either way we ran back. I figured it was coyotes or something so I researched some of the animals' calls from near me. None got even close to matching. In February of this year my sister was out with a couple others. They had stopped at that same park again to chill for a bit around 2 am, and heard that same high-pitched scream gurgle sound from all around them. And once again, bolted home. Everything was chill for a bit up until early October late September-ish my sister, and I went on a walk to get the mail around 9 pm. On our way back, I said we should walk faster, and she agreed, having a bad feeling as well. We suddenly heard what sounded like a cracking caw from a bird, at an ear-bleeding frequency that was so loud, the streetlight in that area went out for a second as well. I would've told myself it was a bird, but the only thing was, is that the birds in my area were gone at this point. Literally last week late October, around 8p, Mai was taking a walk with a friend to watch the sunset. We had walked over to another subdivision a bit away from us, and went to the park there after walking for out 45 minutes. My friend was persistent on going so against my better judgment I did. They sat in the gazebo for a moment, but I couldn't keep my guard down, and it seemed like something was by the trees. I take a closer look and see a creature that's pure white speeding towards us. It was running weird, but that's all I could say. It looked like something was rotating on it. Either way we bolted, got home about 30 minutes later. The reason I'm even posting this for help is because it's getting out of hand. About an hour Aguarly November, 8 p.m. my sister, friend, and I went to go for a walk. I had a rotting pumpkin and my mom told me to go throw it in the woods. We walked to the back to do so, and we see a large white figure speeding past us just behind the trees. I want to say it was a deer, but it was too large and white to be one. I just need to know what this is, it's been terrorizing me and everyone around me for a while. I've even looked into calling an expert, but I don't know what I'd say. I used to take walks at night with my dog, but not anymore, not after what happened that one night. We live really close to the woods where there are wild animals like coyotes. I was upset so I took my dog and left the house at some time like 11 pm or later. I don't much remember the time, but it was really late at night. We went on our usual trail, and it was really dark, but I didn't care at the moment. We were walking back when suddenly this dark shadowy figure the size of an adult human, walks from left to the right side of the street right in front of me. I stopped walking and held my breath and my dog didn't move either which made me even more freaked out. The thing was walking on all four it looked like a human walking on all four with the butt up and head down. But there was no face no detail, just darkness. It was a solid shape, it walked and had a shadow too. And then it went through the bushes and vanished. I ran with my dog all the way home, and I could not stop thinking about it. 
currently shedding tears of fear while writing this, because that thing was no animal. I have wanted to share my story for a while, and finally am. I will tell this story at my dad's house, as my parents are divorced. It was around 4 am, and I had woken up to use the restroom. For some context, I was sharing a room with my sister and stepbrother. My sister and I were using a bunk bed, and I had the top bunk, and our beds were straight across from the door. Anyway, I climbed down and walked down the hall to the restroom. Now I admit, I was scared as I had been watching quite a few scary movies, which many people tell me is why I saw what I saw, but I assure you, this was real, and I wasn't imagining it. So I used the restroom and washed my hands. I was a bit scared to flush the toilet, so I brushed my hair. I then flushed the toilet and exit the bathroom. Now, the way the house is set up is that the right side of the hall sticks out longer than the left. On the left side, the shorter wall has the kitchen, the first thing being the fridge. Then, on the right side, it sticks out longer because the bathroom is right there. At the time, my room was the first door on the right down the hall. From the hall's view, you can see the living room, where one lamp was lit, and there was no other light. So anyway, I flush the toilet and walk out, but no one is there. No one was even awake. My dad and stepmom were asleep in their room, and my other siblings were asleep. So I turn and start walking down the hall. I suddenly felt this overwhelming fear, and I don't know what made me want to turn around. So I stop in the hallways and slowly turn my head back. I saw a very tall and large black figure peering from behind the left side of the wall. The living room lamp lit the living room up quite a bit, so it was nowhere near dark. But this black figure was distinct and watching me from behind the wall. I could see the shape of its head and shoulders, more one shoulder than the other. It had no hair or face, it was just a black void with a profile. It was the most fear I have ever felt in my life. I immediately ran to my room. Now, at the time, I wasn't thinking it was a shadow figure or anything of the sort. I was more thinking it was an intruder. So I ran into my room and desperately tried to get onto my bed, but I couldn't find the ladder to get up. I finally found it and climbed as fast as I could, and I got under my blanket. I remember my exact position. I was slanted, and my feet were crossed. I had my hand, which was holding the blanket up to the top of my forehead. I remember praying and asking for protection over everyone. The odd thing was I remember saying it, never he even though I thought it was an intruder. My blanket was tucked in on every corner, and the left side of my bed was against the wall. But I know for a fact my blanket was tucked in. But as I'm lying there and praying, my heart pounding out of my chest, I feel a tug at the very bottom right corner of my blanket. My heart stopped. I literally froze and completely stopped breathing. All the logical thoughts then rushed in. It's just me moving or me breathing. So, to test it, I hold my breath, and am as still as possible. A tug happens again, only this time higher. I then start to panic, and have so many thoughts at once. Time was passing so slowly, that it felt like 30 minutes had gone by when, in reality, it had only been a couple of minutes at most. My blanket got tugged four or five times, each higher than the last. I remember thinking about whether I should call my sister or not. I thought, it would know I'm here if I call for her, then thinking, well, it already knows I'm here. I thought this repeatedly, and it was like my thoughts were getting louder and louder. I decided to do it. I started calling her name in a shallow whisper, and gradually started screaming her name. I was petrified of this thing I saw in the hall, and it was now pulling at my bed sheets. She runs and turns on the light. I didn't even move. All I did was stick my hand out and cry as she held my hand. When I finally looked, there was no one there. I told everyone what happened, but no one believed me. Even now, only some do. Something even more odd to add was that there was a handprint of a left hand on the right side of the fridge door, 
which is how someone would be standing to peek out into the hall. It was too small for anyone in the house's handprint, which was weird considering how tall and large the figure looked. The image of the figure is burned into my mind. I will forever remember that moment. And it was that moment that led me to believe in the paranormal. Thank you, guys, for reading my story, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. My story is from 1988. I was just moving out of the house for the first time. I moved to Crestline, California with a couple buddies. This story involves my buddy Nate and myself. He was helping me move into my room, and, by then, we moved most of my things, and it was the end of the night, probably around 10 pm. My room was facing the back of a slope of the hill. Right above the hill, was another house, and there were no fences, so neighbors and the kids, I noticed, throughout the day, were playing and just going through the yard. You know, no big deal. When my buddy and I were in the room, we looked out the window, and we saw a couple kids. And it was pretty late at that time and very dark. The kids were just playing around, having a good time. I go and get another beer for Nate, and when I come back, he says, the kids went away. And there was just one girl left, and it's kind of weird. We're looking, trying to see if she was okay because she was just standing there, kind of just facing, I guess, east. When she started moving, she started moving slowly. And we noticed that, I don't know if it was the moonlight or what, but her skin started becoming more pale. Yeah, it was really weird. She was dressed in normal clothes. Just at that time, she started to put her head up and started looking around. We didn't say anything because we were already freaked out. But then when she looked at us, her eyes were all black. Then maybe a couple seconds later, it was almost a reddish black. Really weird. That freaked us out, and we slammed the window shut, and put the blinds over it. And as we just peeked through the window, to see what was there, it was almost like it was a, I don't want to say skinwalker, but it was almost like a creature, something out of Men in Black the movie. It was all quiet, but it wasn't a girl anymore. It was almost like a human-like body, but the arms and the legs were almost double-jointed, and it was walking, and, very, almost crab-like. It was very weird, you know? At that point, it was just screaming like crazy. So, at that point, we just ran down the stairs, and we were trying to contemplate whether we should just get in the car. We stayed inside for about an hour and my buddy Nate and I were having anxiety through the roof. And, at one point, Nate decided to just say screw it, and let's just get out of here. We ran down through the deck, got in the car and luckily the car was an automatic. You know, the button, you can just press it, and it opens. Well, when we were backing up you have to go slow on the very tip, where it gets onto the main street from your driveway, or else it'll scratch the back of the car. But, at that point, we were going too fast. He went backward too fast, and when it hit the bottom of the tow hitch, it was so fast that the truck went back on it, that the front end went up, and we were vertical basically for, maybe, 30 seconds freaking out. I kid you not. At that point, I was able to use my body weight to push the car forward. And when it went down forward, we looked down, and there was the creature right in front of us. We were just cold. It was humanoid, almost a human body, with no hair. But it was just a pale creature almost like an insect. But its arms and legs were both disjointed. It was the craziest thing. It was exactly what a praying mantis looks like. The arms and legs. I used to work in a state park in a rural town, and would hike in through a park trail from the town to my office regularly. There were several routes, the trail being the longest, but also the prettiest. One morning, I had enough time to take the trail from the road where the bus dropped me off. As I turned a corner in the trail, I saw a woman ahead of me jogging, which was not uncommon on this trail. I looked down at my phone while walking, expecting to feel her pass by me, but when I looked up a few seconds later, she had disappeared. She was gone. 
There was nowhere else that she could have gone without making a lot of noise in brambles or being visible to me where I was standing. I stood there, confused for a few seconds, and looked around for her, thinking she had fallen, or had gone down a side trail. She was absolutely nowhere, although she did not have enough time to move so far from me that I wouldn't have seen her in a clear area under trees. I moved on, thinking my mind was playing tricks on me. Later down the same trail, I saw a small white fluffy dog jump out of some bushes, seemingly without an owner. I smiled at the dog and tried to get its attention as I got closer. The dog looked at me, turned and walked down the trail. As I got closer, the dog turned down an open side of the trail, which led to a space under the trees that I could see easily. As I watched, one second the dog was there. And one second it wasn't. It was not there. Nowhere to be seen. No noise. I stood there blinking in the morning light. I had seen a dog, hadn't I? And what about that woman at the top of the trail? That was when I realized that neither of them had made a sound. To this day I still cannot explain WTF happened to me that morning. A time glitch. Seeing ghosts. I have no idea. When I was young, I used to live a fair way out from town, about 50 kilometers to the nearest store, so we never saw people. When I was about 11 my mum left me home alone for a couple days while she went to a equine show. All fine as dandy, I was happy. Got to stay up late playing video games. Anyway 1am rolls around and I head to my room to get ready for bed. I flick on my light and out my window in the pitch darkness, I somehow see a tall 7-foot human shadow walk past my window. It was as dark as the night outside, but somehow I could see it outlined in the darkness. The veranda outside was old and rickety, it would creak and groan when a 20-kilo dog walked on it. But this thing moved completely silently. It didn't stop or look in my window when the light came on, just walked casually by like it didn't even notice. The direction it was walking it would walk off the veranda into the horse stables and trigger the auto lights, never triggered the lights. Either way it scared the living shit out of me. I panicked as a kid does and tried to call mum, couldn't get her on the phone. So I camped in the living room inside a blanket fort with dogs for safety. We live in a densely forested area, borderline rainforest in the US Northwest. The land we built our modest house on has no known history of being previously lived on, though Native Americans may have previous to white colonization. Our experience has primarily been with cats, but these cats are not living. We began seeing a few different ones over the past 15 years. Sightings come in spurts, we will have several experiences, then nothing for months. The cats are usually sitting on the toilet, near the bathroom sink, walking and scampering quickly into our out of the bedrooms or out the front door. Once, my daughter has her teen friends over and three of them saw a black and white cat come out from the bedroom and run under a chair at the table they were sitting at. At least nine people have seen them. They are orange, beige, black and white. One time my mother was visiting and whole, she was talking we heard two disembodied meows, about seconds apart. My one and only live cat was asleep on my lap at the time. My daughter and I have both felt an unseen cat run up against our legs, while standing at the bathroom sink. We keep our cat's food and water in the bathroom. Our cat is an orange manx who is a 100% indoor boy. He has a short tail. The orange ghost cats has a normal tail. We have never owned any of these spectral cats, but we suspect they were area cats who met a bad end with dogs, coyotes, or worse. When I was maybe nine, I was running through the woods in the middle of the day. The day was bright, and it was around fall. I remember hearing shuffling footsteps and normally I would call out and make myself known, because people who were hunting sometimes ended up on our land. 
Not this time. For some reason, my heart was stone, and I looked around until I saw it. It looked like a tall man with a wolf's head. Its entire body was this black fuzziness, but it was the middle of the day so I couldn't blame it on shadows. I didn't know what it was, but the fear that shot through me, I have only felt twice in my life. It didn't seem to notice me, but when I regained use of my body, I ran. I still have no idea what it was, and that was basically the last time I went in those woods. Another one. I grew up on a small island with a small population, and lots of uninhabited areas. I loved to go on night walks when I was in high school, because everywhere felt safe. One night when I was on a road, ahead of me underneath a street lamp was a figure in a black cloak covering their whole body, except for their face which was eerily white and illuminated. I felt something was terribly wrong and unreality hit me hard. But I kept walking forward. I had a feeling almost like the world was spinning in front of me, but felt compelled to keep walking. As I got close to the figure, they got on all fours and moved off into the brush. I still feel terrible chills when I remember it. I have no idea what the hell that thing was. Growing up in rural Ohio, I lived on a stone road. I used to take the country roads to the closest town, which passed an old cemetery in the middle of a wooded semi-swamp. I used to pass there every day on my paper route as a kid in the 80s. Way in the back of the small cemetery was an old Washington Monument-shaped grave that was broke at the base. The top section was a few feet away from the base. Every day I would lift that top section back onto its base, and go ride do my route. The next day without fail the top section would be in exactly the same place. I did this every day for about two years. One day I looked at where the top section was laying, and I saw a very small glint of white marble poking through the ground. I moved the grass away and the dirt away, and uncovered a small grave of a dead infant, that matched the same last name as the name on the grave. I never lifted the top section ever again. Every time I go visit home, which is now a couple thousand miles away, I go back to that cemetery, and that top section is still laying on top of that infant grave. Had an experience with a drug plane in the middle of the night being loaded and unloaded. I have never been unarmed since. Edit. It was in the American Southeast at my buddy's farm and hunting camp. A couple of us just college-aged kids were out there fishing and drinking a couple beers and cooking burgers and hanging out until we got tired. It was getting late, and at exactly midnight we heard an unmistakable single-engine airplane start up. He has an airstrip about 5100 yards from his cabin. We could clearly hear it taxi down the airstrip and then take off into the pitch black night with zero light. All of the sudden, Addy these cranked up from the back of the airstrip, and started hauling ass our way. I yelled to turn off the radio and douse the lights and get inside, so we could pretend we weren't there and didn't see anything. I asked my buddy if he had any guns. Zero. Anyway, they came by the cabin, stopped like they were thinking about what they should do with us, and then kept booking it on the Addy these. The creepiest thing is that they had to have waited and waited to take off until they couldn't wait any longer. They were listening to us drinking beer and kicking the shit all evening. So I used to live in a rural area growing up. We had a neighbor across the street, but he had a long driveway and they could have maybe heard a scream if it was really loud. But one night I was about 12 maybe and I was babysitting my younger brother who was 10. I was upstairs watching TV, and he was downstairs playing video games. Where I was sitting I could see car lights from people driving on the gravel road. The gravel road was a decently busy road during the day, so it wasn't uncommon for a handful of cars to be on it at night. But this night I saw a car drive super slowly back and forth by our house. 
It at one point drove into our driveway and around our place. I started freaking out and locked all the doors. The car slowly left the house and I felt a little better. About a half hour or so though I saw a car speeding past our house on the gravel road followed by a cop car. I never found out what had happened, but it had me freaking out. Another story wasn't in rural area and is actually kind of funny. So I lived in my house in a suburb of a city. I had a ring camera doorbell cause someone had been cutting my Halloween light decorations. Well Halloween had passed and I didn't have anything outside anymore so wasn't too worried about anyone appearing on the camera at night. I was up late one night since I had just worked a night shift. It was like 2 AM and all my other roommates were at work when my phone started getting notification from my ring that someone was at my front door. I started freaking out cause my roommates weren't going to be home for hours so it wouldn't be them. I finally worked up the courage to open the ring app on my phone to see what was on the camera. It turned out it was a deer eating some leaves on on of my front bushes. I felt happy and a little stupid for freaking out lol. I was hiking in New Hampshire during college, and something happened that, at the was time was unexplained. I'd been hiking a few times before, and my two friends hadn't ever been one from a beach town in Florida, one just a city person from Long Island, but there was a well-known spot close to our college. It was a short hike, maybe two miles, but they were definitely unprepared. We got a late start, and it was fall so I remember grabbing a random flashlight I had laying around my dorm. They didn't think about that and underestimated how long it would take for people who'd never gone hiking to get to the top. We got there no problem, but about 10 minutes into our descent down, it started to get dark real fast. So I brought out my flashlight. All is going well until it starts dying. It was a miracle a college student had a flashlight in the first place. And this was a time before everyone had iPhones. I had a flip phone and they had blackberries we think were pretty close to trailhead, but still speed up a bit. It still wasn't pitch black, but it was getting very close and the flashlight was fading in and out. All of a sudden in the distance we hear a gut-wrenching shriek that wasn't human. If I remember it was more of an echo through the trail, and it didn't sound too close, but what the hell did I know? The three of us were petrified. We didn't even say anything to another. We just all started running because we had no idea what it could be. It felt so surreal. To be running from an unknown thing, and the only sound was of our feet hitting the ground, and it felt deafening to me. I can't even recall hearing any incest or birds in the woods, just footsteps racing to get the F out. It didn't take us more than 10 minutes to get down, which was such a relief to see her car. We got in and just booked it. I barely remember the car ride back, I honestly think I blacked out in combo of post-adrenaline fear and relief. I do remember we didn't even talk about in the car, no WTF was that, or that could have gone really bad, I honestly don't think we said a word that night or ever again. It was too scary and weird to think about. It wasn't until years later, reading a similar story on here that someone said it was probably a mountain lion. I went on YouTube and searched the sound, and had immediate chills. It was 100% a mountain lion. If you've never heard one, it's truly horrifying. It doesn't even sound of this world. So yeah, in hindsight we probably shouldn't have run, but man, screw that sound a mountain lion makes. I live in a city now. But when I was a kid I lived with my grandma in a very rural area of Florida that was known for being a dumping ground for murder victims. I never actually found a body whilst playing in the woods, but I did find a woman leaning over a creek in a dirty white dress at around 6 p.m. right as the sun was setting. I heard her faint sobbing in the distance and went to investigate. When I climbed over the embankment at the edge of the creek and finally saw her. She almost immediately started screaming at the top of her lungs, just staring into the water. Obviously I wasn't a scaredy cat, I was a brave 12 year old. So naturally, 
I instantly shit my pants and ran away. Still have no idea what that woman was doing. But that area was also known for having meth labs hidden in the woods. So that probably explains some of the strange people I met playing in that area. One Friday this summer one of my neighbors who has no kids cleaned her storm door. She had no visitors that day. When she woke up the next morning, there were what looked like 10 or 15 children sized handprints on her storm door. She called the cops just in case there was a missing child or something, and they came out to take a look. Said it could have been raccoons probably was but for a while there, I was genuinely freaked out. Summer 2020 I made the mistake of going out onto the porch at around 11 p.m. I was about to take the trash out to the dumpster across my backyard, but I felt something in the yard and froze. A few seconds later I heard footsteps, and something moved around out there. It was not a person. I left the trash on the screened in porch and locked the door behind me so fast. I don't go outside after dark now if I can help it. We've recently had reports of black bears in the area, so that might have been it, but I don't know. I've never seen one here in person. Lived 30 miles from the main road. Private land all the way to the house. Big panel windows all around the living room that looks over the property. We had no one near us so privacy was constant. Up late watching monster truck rally with the living room lights on, no lights on outside. Two men come up to the window and slap their hands on the glass and look right at me. I can hear them say to let them in and casually and slowly walk towards the front door connected to the living room. The door and connected frame was large and wide. When they walked behind the frame of the front door, where I couldn't see them I heard nothing. I walked to an angle where I would be able to see them and saw nothing. They weren't there or anywhere. It was like nothing happened, and I started to think that I imagined the whole thing. The slow walk and dead eyes were just so weird. I had some sleep paralysis or something of that nature. My room was a split level, and I woke up to my dog barking under the blankets. It was just little precursor barks, so I just rolled over as this was pretty common. The alarm said 3.11 a.m., and as I rolled over it clicked 3.12. Then a car started down our long driveway, about 150 yards. I can see it slowly drive the whole distance, and I was still laying in bed. My dog starts barking more violently, and I'm froze in bed. Not with fear, basically only my head could turn. My house's front door opened, in the light from upstairs down to my room, I see a dark shadow coming down the stairs fast, and in the moment of an instant, it jumped from the stairs on top of me. I flung up awake and startled from a nightmare. My dog does a little precursor bark. I roll over. The alarm says 311. It clicks 312. A car is coming down my driveway. It was my mom coming back from drinking. She came in talking normal 3 AM drunk bullshit. Bonus story. Once the same house was broken into, I got off a 12-hour shift, came home exhausted, and the window was broken to the door, and it was ajar. I called my mom first thing while I'm walking through the house. She asked, are they still there? And I started backing out of the house like, I actually don't know. Really made me realize how different people react to events. I skipped scared and jumped to annoyed. Bonus thoughts. I might not be the only 30-something that Blair which really messed up. I grew up camping on our creek, tents, etc. But after that movie, I always felt eerie in the woods alone. I really stripped the innocence of the woods from me. My dogs helped, but also made things worse. Farm dogs are always looking for trouble, which makes squirrels the same as witches or skinwalkers. There is such an eerie darkness about living in the country. The sounds of the woods are unmatched. The quietness, the light, or lack thereof. Moonlight truly starts the mischief that much easier. 
Final story I thought of. If someone comes to your door to try and sell you something or offer you free help, they might be casing your house to rob you. It happened to us in California and my wife was oblivious to it and started the tour. I had to kick the people out with a big show of why it would be a bad idea for them. It was common knowledge in rural living though. Okay so to start off I do not truthfully believe in paranormal stuff exactly. Or cryptids mostly because of my own ignorance. I presume of discounting anything I've seen. Disclaimer. This story is also from about 10 to 13 years ago when I was in high school. This takes place in South Jersey Pinelands. I lived with my parents in a neighborhood at the time which was pretty developed and had trails that led to a huge forest with a giant pit filled with water. The neighborhood had like a rainwater runoff basin right behind the street corner. All us kids hung out around and from that basin trails lead to the woods towards the pit. One night after me and my friend had been night fishing probably wrapped up around 9 p.m. we got back to the street corner that wraps around the basin. And he walked home I stayed for a minute and sat down at the corner to stargaze. This was like an early spring night so it was fairly dark by this time but still seeable because of the moon and street lights of the neighborhood. For some reason I got up ready to go home but had a weird feeling so turned around towards the dark forest behind the basin. And I saw what looked like a glowing white husky. It looked normal size for a big dog to me but was odd at how well I could see it. And it was staring right at me. I figured it couldn't have been a coyote because even from afar it was at least a 100 pounds dog. I thought it was a lost white husky so I ran down the basin hill and started slowly walking towards it saying. Hey buddy stuff like that. The thing didn't flinch and it now looked more like a pretty big white husky slash wolf. I started thinking this thing could be closer to my size and am 6'3 plus 280 pound high schooler who played sports than it was to a regular husky. I was like 200 feet away from it and I wasn't scared but I no longer wanted to greet this thing. I walked back slowly facing it and then eventually I bolted to the street corner streetlight. And I turned back no white husky. I'd quote I saw or what this thing was but it was at least a very large dog. I didn't think it meant any harm but I wasn't gonna pet it when I felt sized up. Not sure if this fits any dogman stories or not I was on another paranormal sub and stumbled on a dogman story and thought wow that could have been what I saw. But mine was like a glowing mystic white and probably not 10 feet or standing on hind legs or really looking like a monster but it was deaf as big as me probably an imposing. Let me know what you think. Of course it probably was just a white lost dog but odd at how big it appeared and how it never really moved. This is also the exact area we just walked back from in the pitch black forest. My friend still brings it up and calls it my white wolf sighting. But no one other than him believes it because Hess sworn Hess seen lights hovering around those woods and that basin before. We could both have just been crazy. I was born and raised in Pottstown, Pennsylvania and currently still live here. The sighting was an hour west from Philadelphia and half an hour away from Valley Forge. I ran into your FB page through Weird Pennsylvania or something similar to that which led me to the webpage Phantoms and Monsters. I was reading some things and saw where people who had experienced encounters and sightings could email you with their story. I've had two experiences where I've seen things that I cannot explain. I'll start with the most recent. Last year a friend and I went for a ride to catch up with our friend. It was in March 2020 on a Saturday night and it just so happened to be the weekend when the quarantine started. We were on RT.422 around midnight and it was odd cause that highway's usually pretty busy on a Saturday night, but that night we saw maybe three cars within a 30 minute ride. So we finishing visiting our friend and started to make our way back home. It was around 2.30 to 3 a.m. and we were going westbound on RT.422 and again we were pretty much the only car on the road. There's a grass patch that divides the eastbound and westbound highway. We were in the fast lane between the Collegeville and Royersford exit when all of a sudden we passed something to the left of us in the grass. 
We couldn't see it until we were right up on it and only could catch a glimpse of it for a second. This thing looked like it was on all fours maybe eating roadkill or something, but unfortunately I could only see it from like the waist slash hips down. It was much bigger than a deer and had longer unkempt slash straggly orangish reddish fur, kind of like the color of a red fox but a little lighter in color. What really gets me was the legs on this thing. It had canine-like legs but they were huge and muscular. It just had that shape that instantly told me this thing was not something you want to FCK with. The legs looked like the drawings I've seen of werewolves or something evil. Something told me that this thing could walk on two legs also. After we passed it I asked my friend who was driving, did you see that? He replied, yeah. I asked him, what was that? He replied I don't know. Neither of us brought it up again during that ride because I think we were just trying to process what the hell did we just see and didn't want to sound crazy. When I got home I told my boyfriend about it and he has no idea what kind of animal that lives around here that it could have been. Next time I saw my friend, who had been driving that night, we both agreed that whatever we saw does not fit the description of any animals in the area and that it was scary looking. He calls it the beast. A couple months later another friend was leaving my house and heard something across the street making a low guttural growling noise which scared him straight to his car and out of there. He was an animal control officer for years and says nothing around here would make that noise. Then about a month after that my boyfriend was taking out the trash. When he got to the front door he heard something scratching at the door and sniffing loudly. He said it sounded like a pig grunt sound but obviously it wasn't a pig. This past October my friend was sitting in his car in my driveway waiting for me to come outside. I noticed his doors were locked when I went to get in the car. He said he heard something that sounded kind of human but didn't know what it was and it scared him. Once I got in his car I told him everything I just wrote here and I ended my story to him saying, a few months ago I saw something on RT.422 and before I could say anything else he said I saw it too. So I asked what color it was and he described the exact same fur I saw. Then he said when I saw it, it was running on two legs across the highway and once it saw my car it took off really fast like nothing around here would be able to. My heart was beating so hard listening to him tell me this because I know he wasn't making it up. I was glad someone else saw this thing. He doesn't know what it was but said it was about 7 to 8 tall and looked nefarious. He agreed its legs looked evil. He saw it around the same time of year as me and it was about the same time of night too. I drive this highway all the time and look for it every time but haven't seen it again. That's about it for that story. I always wonder if any other people saw this thing and what the hell it was. A friend and I went to the woods to barbecue over a fire as we do now and then all year around. I live in Stockholm, Sweden and the woods we go to lies next to a lot of apartments in Gubbangen. I have always been into the Sasquatch slash Bigfoot subject and I know it is real. We have them here in Sweden as well, what people refer to as trolls here is the same as Bigfoot or Sasquatch, same being different names. However, my friend and I went into the woods to a specific place we always go to when we make our fire, barbecue and drink beer. After a while when the fire was started, I grabbed a big stick went to a tree and knocked it hard three times. Ten minutes pass and further into the woods a see this orb just appear and hovers about three meters off the ground. I stare at it and I think to myself that is not a person with a flashlight or anything like that at all. The orb just hovered at the same spot and then disappeared. I thought to myself weird thing is about to go down. Time passes and darkness has fallen over the woods. We sit in front of the fire when we hear a weird noise. My friend asks if I had heard that. I looked over the fire into the darkness and saw two yellow eyes glowing in the darkness staring at us. I said do you see those glowing eyes staring at us? He confirmed that he did. That is not a human or an animal I said and he agreed. We stared at it for 30 seconds when it suddenly moves away almost floating, leaving traces from the glowing eyes. I was creeped out. 
One week later we go to the same spot and it's dark. The fire is lit when we suddenly start to hear tree breaks from the woods, thick tree breaks. It starts from the left and moves to the right in circles around us. The tree breaks keep moving around us and gets closer and then gets quiet for a couple of minutes. All of sudden 15 meters to the right of us a big F king tree break echoes through the woods. My friend quickly stood up when this 5 meter long log crashes into a big rock behind us. Suddenly something then appears behind us and smashes the log with another log. We jump back and away. This thing hit the upper part of the log which means that this thing was huge and strong as hell. My friend turns on the flashlight and looks around, we see nothing and it's quiet. When we walked around in the woods, we were loud as hell, twigs breaking and tons of other sounds under our feet. But this thing moves fast, silently around us. That's the scary part as well. We were scared as hell and quickly left. One other time when I was walking on a track two stones comes flying from above and lands in front of me. I look up into the trees and see this transparent shaped thing in the trees and then it just disappears. Giant wolf-like creature I saw in Virginia. 10 or so years ago I was driving with my brother in Virginia Beach, Virginia. It was late at night and we were going to grab some food. We were the only car on this road which wasn't abnormal due to the time of night. The right side of the road was wooded with trees and on the left was a fence that ran parallel to the road. A giant wolf-like creature ran full speed in front of the car. It came from the right wooded area and was booking it towards the fence. This thing was at least 12 feet tall minimum. It was hunched over running insanely fast on its back legs. The legs were bent backwards and extremely muscular. The only way I could describe it was they were bent backwards in a way that demon legs are depicted. The legs were furless except for near the bottom where there were patches of fur. It was wearing a brown hooded cloak that was tattered along the bottom edges. The hood covered its head and midsection leaving the legs fully exposed. Some sort of elongated snout was emerging from the front of the hood. It was square like a wolf's and had fur. The thing never turned to look at us. It was running towards the fence, jumped and cleared it. I have never seen anything jump so high. I spent the next couple of moments trying to process what I saw. I thought there was some kind of logical explanation until my brother said did you see that? and described in detail exactly what I had seen. The only thing that differed was he saw what he described as long claws emerging from the front of the cloak. Seeing this thing terrified me. Ten years later I am still terrified. Any ideas of what it was? Edit, the cloak and the backwards legs were something I really focused on. The cloak was cloth and I am certain it wasn't fur or anything else. My husband seems to think what I described is a Wendigo which I am not sure the description matches at all. It didn't have antlers and from what I looked at those things live way up north. He did mention that there were Algonquian speaking people, Chesapeake tribe, living in Virginia Beach many many years ago. Situated in South London and dating back 170 years, the aptly named Camberwell Old Cemetery is reportedly home to a familiar supernatural creature that is said to skulk among the gravestones. Tales of this alleged werewolf recently caught the attention of local researcher Andy McGrath who discovered two intriguing encounters that took place at the cemetery eight years apart. In the first instance, which took place on October 9, 1996, a man had been taking a shortcut through the cemetery when something grabbed him by the arm and smashed him into the ground. He saw a large creature, with dark fur and a head like a German shepherd, looking at him intently, slobbering and growling and sniffing his body up and down, just as a dog would, said McGrath. Just as quickly as the attack started, it was over and the beast sprinted off on its hind legs. The second encounter, which occurred in 2004, involved two witnesses. We heard a low growl, one of them said. 
Then a large tree in the corner of the cemetery was shaking incredibly hard as if something really powerful was shaking it with all its might. It was definitely not made by a person or an animal. The tree looked as if the roots were ready to be ripped out. My friend and I took to our heels and ran as fast as we could in different directions. We could not rationalize the sheer terror we both felt. We knew we had to get as far away from the cemetery as we possibly could. There is something very sinister there. So could there really be a werewolf stalking this 170-year-old cemetery? If a creature is described as being animal-like, then it probably is an animal and not uncommonly, a known animal, even if the qualities it portrays seem superficially supernatural, at the time, said McGrath. My dog man experiences. Good afternoon. Just wanted to give you a rundown of my experiences. As I stated in my previous post, I used to play in an old phone booth at my aunt and uncle's house. This is definitely where the encounter started although I can't say how as I have no memory of what I did while inside the phone booth. It was an old wooden thing, like you find at the back of a bar or something. I later found out it was from an old Chicago train station that got torn down. So the first encounter I recall was in 1985 or 1986, I was around 7 or 8. It was summertime, late in the day so around dusk. Not full daylight but not dark out yet. I was in the front yard playing catch with my cousin and the ball went past me and down the side of the house into the back. The yard was surrounded by a chain-link fence that separated the yard from an old overgrown alley that was used as a road at one time. When I went to retrieve the ball I noticed some rustling in the brush. I'm thinking it was a cat or squirrel or something. As I got closer I noticed something moving very close to the fence. I thought it was a man at first. It was as big as a man, but covered in brownish hair. From what I could see its head was canine, snout, ears, etc., but it had human-like hands. I couldn't really see the lower half of the body due to the weeds and grass. It appeared to be injured in some way the way it was moving. It was using the fence to drag its way down the alley. Hand over hand, just pulling itself. I stood and watched for what seemed like a long time but in reality was probably only a minute or two before running up to get my cousin. I told him I'd seen a monster in the alley. We excitedly talked about it before getting up the courage to head back and look. By the time we got back there, it was gone, leaving no trace other than the smashed down grass. I didn't think about it again for a long time. Flash forward to sophomore year of high school so 1994. I'm 16. I get home and head to my bedroom for a nap. I was meeting some friends back at the school later to see a football game or something like that. So I wake up and it's dark in my room, the only light is coming from the hallway because my door is open several inches. As my eyes adjust I realize I'm not alone. There are four or five of these creatures in my room, watching me. They are all six feet or taller, covered in dark hair, with canine facial features. Just watching. They don't move toward me, they don't communicate, nothing. I think to myself, I must be dreaming. I lay there for a bit, squeezing my eyes closed and when I reopen them, the creatures are gone. I convince myself it was a dream and go about my night. Next time it happens is about 2005 so I'm 27. Sometimes after work, some friends would meet at a local restaurant for drinks and food. I didn't work that night so my boyfriend and I headed up to meet them. Nothing out of the ordinary happened. On the way home my boyfriend are chatting about the day and what we are going to do that weekend, etc. I noticed something ahead in the road and so I slow slightly. I'm thinking it may be a bag or some garbage or something but as we get closer I notice it looks more like an animal. At this point we are both silent and I'm almost at a complete stop. The creature stands up on hind legs and I now see that it is humanoid with canine features. It slowly turns its head toward us and then just kind of drifts away. It didn't run, it was just no longer there. Hard to explain. 
I made sure I asked my boyfriend to tell me exactly what he saw before I told him what I saw. I wanted to make sure we had seen the same thing. He described to me exactly what I saw. That was the last major encounter I had. Back to the phone booth. I always felt that the phone booth was connected somehow so I asked my mom. I asked her to tell me what I had said after coming out. What was I doing? She said I would just go inside and play around like little kids do. It was safe and they could keep an eye on me easily. I asked her to try to remember anything that might help me tie it together. After speaking to my aunt, she said they remembered. I would come out and tell them I had gone to visit the puppy people. While helping to tie things together, it really only served to raise more questions. Where did I go when I got in that phone booth? I think they followed me. Good afternoon. First time posting here. I've had several encounters with dogmen over my whole life but I've never felt threatened, only observed. It started when I used to play in an old phone booth at my aunt's house as a toddler and told my mom that while I was inside I went somewhere to visit puppy people. Anyone ever hear anything like that? I've felt something incredibly similar. It started when I was 8 or 9 when I went camping with my local Cub Scout troop. I remember feeling incredibly weird all night. Not physically weird, just like I was being watched. It stopped in the morning and my family and I left. Over the next several years, I felt that feeling constantly. It started out just happening at night a few times a month for around an hour at a time, then I started to feel it for long. When I was around 12, It started to happen in the day as well. I started to focus on when and where I felt strange and found that it happened most often in certain locations. After a few years, I became convinced that something supernatural was following me. I joined a bunch of cryptid-related subreddits and looked for experiences similar to mine. Eventually, I found a link on this subreddit to an article about someone who claims to have been seeing Dogman since he was very young. I think it was called Brit Haunted by Scary Dogman Sightings Since Childhood, but I'm not 100% sure. If you want, I'll try to post the link here, but it may take a while for me to find. I have thought it was interesting that people who have seen Dogman sometimes report a feeling of dread before a sighting. I felt this exact feeling once when I was 13, but I left the area the moment I felt it. If you want, I can go into more detail about that in further comments. Werewolf Encounter Number 1 I was camping with the Cadet de L.A. Marine Royale in Quebec, Canada. I don't remember where exactly for the city it was 13 years ago when I was 11 or 12 years old. I went camping in a tent alone because there were too many people in the tent. Here I was sleeping in an army-like tent alone with the roof not even connected to the floor which create an open space to the outside. It was summer morning around 6 am when I felt a terrible cold trough my sleeping bag for a few minutes before opening my eyes and what I saw was, first thing first I realized I was outside in broad daylight and in front of me was standing a huge black thing 6 or 7 feet away from me at way also day. He was standing in an impressive one, 5 meters or 2 6 height. I don't t remember if it was on 2 or 4 legs this encounter lasted less than 5 second because I thought I was dreaming. I closed my eyes ignoring completely the red flag and fell back to sleep to be waking up a few hours later at the same spot but the black thing was gone. Now to be sure I wasn't dreaming I finally woke up and look around me to see that I've been dragged out of the tent a few feet away. I crawled back into the tent and fall back asleep for the last time. I asked the person that was in the same tent that acted as watcher because of my bad attitude as me if he noticed that I was gone. He replied that he pushed me to the side of the tent but nothing else. After hearing this, it confirmed me that these thing might exist for real and I've been drag out the tent for some reason. I don't have any sleeping problem also. There is my first story. Up to you to believe me or not. Strangely I didn't notice any kind of cut or slash on my body. (laughs) 
werewolf encounter 2, questioning myself about this, August 2017 in Montreal Park, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. After doing a load of research after my first encounter 8 years ago time prior to the first encounter. I went to a slope in Parc Mont-Royal in Montreal watching the sundown while shugging, drinking half the bottle without pauses, down a 1 liter bottle of 15% wine. I was sure there was a dog man in this park so like a drunken idiot I started howling waiting for a response but nothing. I stayed a few hours on the slope waiting for the night. I left by taking another trail from the one I came from by arriving, resulting in me being lost in a freaking cemetery in the middle of the night. I kept walking in complete darkness for at least half an hour. I was now able to see a few meters in front of me allowing me to walk on the road. I panicked, cried because I was drunk and started running after seeing many tombstones everywhere I just wanted to get out of there. 15 minute later I was finally out of this hell hole cemetery just to be welcomed in the park by two red glowing eyes, might be cars. I fixed these eyes for a good 20 seconds before hearing a hey. I panicked, I took a sprint still looking at these two red glowing eyes going twice even thrice faster than me. I don't think it was a car because the way these lights were moving wasn't car like at all. They finally disappeared in the darkness very far away from me taking my breath while making sure no one was there. I start howling again I waited again and there was a response. I made the worst decision to ignore that howl and I took a quick dip in the artificial lake losing my shoes, socks and keys leaving me without anything to cover my foot. Don't ask me how I managed to walk without them I blacked out. When I'm drunk I'm not myself to say the least. I knew that because I retraced every step I did on Google map and came to this conclusion. I knew where I started and tried to remember everything. I was very even insanely stupid. Old stinker sightings? Hello guys. I'm from Hull in the UK, and I live near a local legend known as the Beast of Barmston Drain or more commonly known as Old Stinker. I'm fascinated in it as it has such an interesting history. The fact this is the oldest, so I believe, dogman to exist, and possibly is still alive. The reason I say this is because I've heard accounts from friends and relatives who have seen a 8 feet tall, broad dark figure with glowing red eyes. Even a kid across the road from me, who was around 9 at the time, claimed to see the same thing. And, just a few weeks ago, my mom and a friend of hers heard a loud growl coming from behind the brick wall we have at the end of our garden, unlike anything she's ever heard. If anyone has had any sightings of this creature, please tell me about it so I can investigate it properly. An experience. It was during my third deployment to Iraq. The platoon had taken up residence in two houses in a village several miles south of Haditha. One day I heard our translator having a heated discussion with two local men. I grabbed my gear and my rifle and walked out to the road to investigate. I asked the translator what was going on. He tells me that these two men are crazy and assures me that they are not dangerous. I ask what they want, and he mumbles about them being superstitious or something along those lines. He assures me that everything is okay, and my attention is not needed. It took a bit of prying, but the translator finally says that they are having a wolfman problem, but they are afraid that if they shoot at it, the local troops will be alarmed and attack their house. They tell us that this wolfman has been coming around late at night and has already killed a few sheep. And they are worried that it's going to start attacking their family. So. I assume somewhere in translation the word dog is turned into wolf and is somehow being conveyed to me by the translator as wolfman. So, I try to clarify do they mean a dog? The translator is a bit hesitant, almost like he's embarrassed that his countrymen are wasting everyone's time by believing in such nonsense. But they are adamant that their house is being besieged by a wolfman. Again, I ask if it's just a big dog, and no, it's a wolfman. So, 
I ask if there are wolves in Iraq and they are all in agreement that yes, there are wolves in Iraq. But there are no wolves in this part of the country and it's not a wolf or a large dog that has been killing their sheep, it's a wolf man. The translator is trying to usher them away but at this point I am very intrigued and still a bit confused over the whole dog wolf wolf man thing. So, I ask them to describe what they are seeing. They tell me that every few nights it comes around, they first see it on four legs as it skulks around their small compound. But then it stands up like a man, walking on two legs. It growls and it has lunged at the men, but as they retreat, it turns its attention to the sheep. Their own dogs refusing to help protect human or sheep. They tell me the creature has killed a few of their sheep and that they have even found one of the bodies ripped apart with portions of it eaten away. They have been hesitant to shoot for fear of troop involvement. The translator says that he has heard of such a creature and even though this type of story has been spread through the area by various people, it is no more than superstitions and delusions. He assures me that there is no such thing as a wolf man. I tell the two men that they should feel free to protect themselves and their livestock. And with my interest peaked, I get the men to agree to allowing us to stop by from time to time and set up an observation post while we are out on patrol. A couple nights later I join a night patrol and we head towards the house. We are greeted by one of the men and he gives us entry to the compound. We go up to the roof and set out sentries to overlook a nearby bridge. About an hour later the homeowner comes up with a panicked look on his face. He's talking really fast, excitement and concern in his voice and body language. He's wanting me to come with him. I tell two others to come with me and we all follow the man. He leads us to the other side of the house and we exit onto an enclosed courtyard where the sheep are being kept. The sheep are making plenty of noise and the man is pointing to a dark corner of the yard. I strain my eyes to see what he's pointing at. Finally, I see it, a large wolf slash dog, just standing in the corner. I ask the other two guys with me if they see it too, and they both agree that it's a wolf or a dog. It moved behind a small sections on a wall and I could hear popping and cracking noises, like joints or knuckles being cracked. When it stepped out from behind the wall, it was upright on two legs. It swiftly and effortlessly jumped the perimeter wall and we could hear it running away on two feet. I conveyed to the man as best I could, if that thing ever showed up again, feel free to shoot it if he could, and if he did, to please let me know. Over the past few years here in KCMO I've noticed some weird activity going on. Down the road about a mile towards KCI airport there is a public walking trail that is almost completely surrounded by thick woods and brush. About a year or so ago it was open to the public 24-7 with no limitations. My wife and I never walked the trail due to work schedules and having a newborn to take care of but driving by it on a normal basis I noticed it was closed all of the sudden with roadblocks sealing off the gravel driveway along with a metal gate. It was like this for about a year until recently it was opened back up with a big sign out up saying park hours, sunrise until sunset. Could there have been an encounter slash attack in the woods there? I know the dog man is here in the Kansas City area. My brother and I have found strange tracks over in Liberty. I've lived in the woods all my life building tree houses and bonfire pits but the woods we found the tracks in I've never been able to go into without having the eerie feeling of being watched. We've also found chunks of deer carcasses, a dead eaglet torn to shreds in a tree and a weird smell once you go far enough back. Not to mention my wife had an experience with a dog man when she was younger that she refuses to talk about. I don't know where it was in KC I just know it was around here. Should I go investigate these areas for more signs? Or just leave it alone? Our family had a band started by my grandfather. He, my mom, uncle and two cousins were in it. On this particular night they had met for a practice, which by 11 or 11.30 was winding down. Our one cousin left, 
and the remaining cousin helped my uncle tear down and put away the equipment while my grandfather tended to the animals which seemed very spooked and nervous. Which really wasn't out of the ordinary as there was a pack of wild dogs that made their way through every so often for a few years back then. The cousin left and headed home. His way took him out to the left at the end of the road and over at the next intersection is where he had the first of the two encounters. But wouldn't become known for a few days. My uncle left 10 minutes or so afterwards and his way home took him to the right over to the main county road. This particular night was either a full moon or very nearly a full moon as my uncle said it was a very bright night. He crossed the tracks and went down through the ravine and as he approached the stop sign, something in the field to his right caught his eye. There was something large and tall standing sort of hunched forward and staring intently in his direction. This happened just as he was on the brake slowing down to stop. But also starting to angle the car for the left hand turn about to be made. His sight of this thing went from glancing to his right, to over his shoulder, then to the rear view mirror as the car stopped. He sat staring for what seemed like hours he said, but was only seconds. Then this thing broke into a sprint directly at the car. My uncle said he was like in a trace of disbelievement. Like his brain couldn't comprehend what his eyes were seeing. The field isn't an overly large field, but still would be a four or five hundred yards between the tree line and the road, and this thing covered it fast. My uncle snapped out of his trace and peeled out of there as fast as he could, watching in the rearview mirror the whole time. This thing was close enough to be illuminated by the tail lights and it was reaching out for the car as he peeled out. He said it ran on two feet not on all fours or even partly on all fours. Two feet. It had dark colored hair either brown or black, appeared to have the muzzle similar to a dog and had pointed ears on top of the head and the eyes appeared to glow a dim yellowish orange. He said one strange thing was he felt as if it wasn't looking at the car, but it was looking at him in the car. That was about as detailed as he could get only seeing it briefly like that. He raced home and called back to the house and told them to lock the doors and stay inside. My grandfather asked why, my uncle said just do it. I seen something in the field, but I'm not sure what. Just lock up to be safe. That was the last and only time he seen anything like that. A few days later at the next band practice, my uncle and cousin were sitting outside having a smoke, and my uncle told him about what he saw, expecting to be made fun of or called crazy. But instead he said I seen something that night on my way home too. As he was approaching the stop, something ran across the road in front of him making him hit the brakes and almost skid off the road. He said he only seen it for a split second as it was moving but from what could see of it. It looked like a massive dog or wolf but looked like it was upright. On two legs, it had could have been the way it seemed to bound or jump over the road. He more or less described the exact same thing thing my uncle seen. Whatever it was, it covered a good two miles which included navigating some dense wooded areas, and a pretty steep sided ravine in only a matter ten minutes at the most. So it was fast. There were reports of strange noises, like growling, howls or barks in the woods along the Thames River, and around some of the farms in and around the time of these sightings, and he said there was some livestock found dead and partly eaten, but everyone tossed it up to the wild dogs that were around at that time. But my uncle knows that was no dog he seen. No one else ever came forward having reported seeing anything. My experience. A little background on me and that day. I work in real estate, more exactly commercial real estate, so my work takes me all over the place from urban industrial areas to very off the beaten path secluded areas, farmlands, development lands etc. On this day in particular, in October of 2012, my last assignment of the day was to go out and survey an old farmstead near Cayuga in Haldeman County, about 30 miles south of Hamilton, Ontario. The place had been vacant since the 90s. I arrived in the late afternoon, I'd say around 5 30 ish. The place was the last one on a dead-end country road and couldn't be seen from the road. 
I went up the long driveway and proceeded to do my look over of the place. There were three structures, the house, a garage and a large tool shed. I walked around the front of the house, which was completely boarded up with no means of seeing inside. I proceeded around to the far side toward the other buildings. The shed was basically fallen completely down but the garage was mostly still completely up. I noticed around the side man door a lot of huge scratches and the door was like half broken down but still held shut by a padlock on one side and the middle and upper hinge. The bottom part was forced inward and the door and clapboards around it were covered with these scratches. But not like scratches a dog would leave these scratches were huge and parallel but spread apart almost like fingernail scratches, and very deep obviously put there with a lot of pressure. That's when I looked down and seen huge paw prints but not regular round paw prints almost elongated a little bit. The area around this partially broken down door was covered with these paw prints. If I had to venture a guess at how wide they were I would say at least 5 inches. I was wearing heeled dress boots and when I put my foot over the paw print I could see the print on either side of my foot and I wear a size 10, so I don't have tiny feet by any means. I began to get very uneasy and that's when I recalled noticing that all the sounds of the forest were gone, it was dead silent and that is when I noticed that stench, like wet dog, urine and feces. I mean the whole area just smelled rotten, like a swamp. Rot and decay. But this smell was strong and very putrid I got very uneasy, like all of a sudden I knew I wasn't alone, and decided I'd seen enough and quickly headed back to my car. That is what I heard something in the bushes and it sounded big it was going through the trees very quickly and hard. I got back to my car I got in and locked the doors. When I started my car and turned the lights on that's when I caught eye shine in the trees ahead of me. But the eye shine was not at the level a dog's head to be at it was a lot higher I would say 4 to 5 feet up, maybe even a bit higher. I could not make out a shape as it was getting on toward dusk and so there was a lot of shadows in the trees but I thought I seen a large figure in the trees but I could not be sure. I started to freak out a little bit and decided it was time to go so I backed around right into a wet marshy spot and kinda got my car stuck. I was more interested in watching this thing than where I was going which was a mistake. My attention quickly went back to the car as I tried to free myself from the mud, when I looked back to where this thing was it was gone. The spot it was I could see further into the tree so there was definitely something there but I could not see exactly a shape more so just a large shadowy figure. After several seconds of rocking my car back and forth I managed to get out and I left very quickly. I don't think I have ever been so scared in my life. Like I said I did not clearly see what it was but I just had the intense feeling of evil. Something bad was there. I returned to that spot about a year and a half after this incident and the place is gone, someone bought the property and tore it down and cut down a lot of the trees, but to the best of my knowledge, nothing has been developed there. It's still just vacant land. I've not really told anyone of this as I don't want to be ridiculed or made fun of. A coworker said it was probably a bear I seen, but I know for a fact there are no bears this far south in Ontario unless it's in a zoo. I had long forgotten about this till I recently seen a video on YouTube about someone's encounter with something very similar to what I described. I handled the sale of some farmland on the nearby, to the place I experienced this, Six Nations Indian Reservation and the client was one of the few remaining pure blood Indians. I'd put him easily in his 80s, if not older. I asked him about odd happenings in the area, like strange animals in that area and sorta of told him of my experience. Not in detail, just that I was on that property. He responded with a question. You seen it didn't you? He went on to say there are many things that are unknown to this world but wouldn't comment further about my experience, only said there is good reason that particular place has sat empty and unused for decades. I had the odd nightmare of that day for about a year afterwards, and I'm still very hesitant to do surveys in areas like that. Dog Man in Deer Brook Wee. This is my first time going public about this encounter, 
out of fear of seeing it again. This took place roughly 14 years ago. When I was a kid, my family moved out of the city and moved to a small town called Deer Brook, situated on the outskirts of Antigo Y. Our house was surrounded by woods on three sides and a river and field in the back. The first year out there was really calm and relaxing other than constant coyote howls every night, but every so often there would be a different howl. It was a deeper much louder howl that would shake us to our core. At first my parents would dismiss it as a wolf or just a bigger coyote, but something about it seemed off. One night in mid-July, my brother, my sister and I decided to pitch a tent in the backfield along the tree line. We just wanted to go. Camping egg. We sat with sticks roasting our marshmallows till it got really dark, then the typical howls started up. But once again that deep howl was back and it sounded like it was right in our ears. With how loud it was, it's hard to even guess where it was coming from, so we decided to put out our fire and get in the tent. Later that night, my sister fell asleep so my brother and I chatted and made jokes. Within minutes we heard animals running around outside the tent, and then this little raccoon started to claw at the side of the tent that I was sleeping on, and first I kept just poking at it but then we heard something else, the crack of sticks from the trees. At that point my brother thought it was a bear and told us to be quiet and woke my sister up. We started to hear footsteps coming closer and closer, pretty quick they were right next to me. The raccoon just bolted out of there, and there started to have this strange odor coming from somewhere, it smelled like copper, sulfur, and wet dog. It was almost overpowering and made me want to puke. The we hear our mom calling us, and as she shined the flashlight on us, it revealed the most unsettling thing I have ever seen. The shadow of this thing was shining through our tent, and it was massive. It had pointed ears that were tilted back like a dog on the prowl and its hands were human looking with long fingers that ended in a point. The mouth was in the shape of a snout just a little shorter, and it had a mid-sized tail. My mom started screaming and whatever that thing was bolted back into the woods. We rushed inside with our mom and didn't go back out for a few days. Fast forward a few months, I was in the living room with my mom while my sister was in the shower. We were watching Wheel of Fortune or something like that, when my sister screamed bloody murder. My mom jumped up and went to go get her, she pulled her out of the bathroom and I got curious as to why she was freaking out so I went in to see. Above the shower at one of the super small windows that only a small head could fit through, and in the window was a set of red glowing eyes staring down at me. We stared at each other for what felt like a decade. I didn't feel fear, more just curiosity and I didn't feel like I was in danger at that time, as my mom came in to then pull me out the eyes turned away as well. The rest of the night was quiet after that. A few days later my brother came back from his dad's. Him and I had bunk beds so I'd always take the bottom bunk. That night was kind of a gloomy night, it wasn't real windy but it was drizzling a little bit. Later in the night my brother and I got woken up to the window being opened. It was locked beforehand btw. After that we just closed it and went back to bed. It happened again and again like three more times, each time we locked it, but the final time was the worst, it flung open so hard that the glass shattered and thins thing we saw what pushed it open that same hand from the tent but I can see it clearly now. It had matted black fur or hair rather, covering its whole arm, the skin on its palms was like a light tan, and the claws were about 5 to 6 inches long. And on the bottom of the window I saw its face or what was showing, it was just the eyes, glowing bright red, they looked like the embers of a roaring fire. My brother and I bolted up grabbed my sister and locked ourselves in the back gaming room. We stayed there for the rest of the night and when my mom came home, we told her and packed our things. We moved out of that house in a day and took what we could fit, filling one car and a U-Haul. My stepdad's truck was full as well and we left never to return. To this day my family is scared to talk about it but if my brother and I have a few drinks we discuss it but my mom just shuts down whenever it's brought up. Thanks for your time.
My wife and I are both very sensitive to energies that most people around us are not. We've each had our share of far out paranormal encounters separately, and since we've been together it's been one hell of a ride, that just seems to get more far out as time goes on. Backstory, while we were building our house, we were living in a large wall tent on our property. It was a pretty large for a tent, almost 400 square feet, so you could easily walk around in it, it had our full-sized bed on a bed frame in there, a kitchen area and a table with several chairs. It even had a canvas drop cloth as a floor so we weren't walking around in the dirt, and I had the sides folding in and weighted down all the way around as well as staked down to keep any critters out. Apart from a couple of flies and one or two spiders, it did the trick. At the time, I was doing freelance handyman slash repair work during the day and building our house in the evenings, and on the day of this incident I was finishing up work on a house that had bad juju written all over it. I could feel the negative energy from the curb the first time I pulled up to the house to meet the owner, and walking through the door the feeling intensified, but it wasn't absolutely overwhelming, and, what can I say, we really needed the money, I had lost part of a thumb a week earlier in an accident working on the house, I had an upcoming surgery to get it stitched up and to get the bone properly covered and we didn't have insurance, money was more than tight. Besides, I felt comfortable in my abilities to keep the negative energy at bay while I did whatever work had to be done and get the hell out of there. Anyways I'm getting off topic, after a couple of weeks of working there, by the way, no one was living there at the time, the regular things that you would expect to happen in a high energy place happened. Lights flipping back on right after I would turn them off, doors slamming shut behind me while I'm walking down the hallway, or opening for me as I'm reaching for them, the kind of stuff that's pretty much just meant to get a rise out of you, and the more I played it cool, the more intense it got. Eventually I get to the last day. When over the phone the owner hinted at stiffing me for the bill and I was packing up all my gear, I guess it was evident that I wasn't planning on coming back, because the activity in the house was extremely low, virtually non-existent, except for the same dense negative energy that was always there, but now more than ever I felt like I was being watched. Not just watched, but stared at, like something was focusing on me with everything it had. Everything up until this point had been weird, but it was only your everyday kind of weird, the kind of weird that people who don't want to accept it can still somehow find logical excuses for. They'll say there was a draft, faulty wiring, really big mice in the walls etc. The next thing that happened was the first thing in the house that genuinely spooked me. As I walked through the living room to the front door to leave for good, tool bucket in hand, I passed the only hallway in the house on my right. As I looked down the hallway to double check that I had turned off all of the lights, I saw something I didn't want to believe. At the end of the hallway, about 20 to 30 feet away from me, sat a huge black dog, its head was following me as I walked past the hallway. When I say huge, I mean massive, like my head would have fit inside of its mouth. Prior experience with manifestations like that have taught me to give it as little energy as possible, and that you're better off acting like you hadn't noticed it. So, I continued to walk calmly to the front door, even though every hair on my body was standing on end and my adrenaline was racing. I stopped at the front door inside the house, turned around and addressed the house and everything within it, stating that as I left the house, nothing was welcome to follow me. I drove home, and that was that, I didn't tell my wife because I didn't want to worry her, we had enough going on at the time without bringing up things that I felt I had already addressed. So fast forward to later that night, my wife and I are fast asleep in bed. I'm torn out of sleep by my wife's terrified gasp, and being in a canvas tent in the middle of nowhere I was already on edge. In the first split second of being awake I see my wife sitting upright in in our bed, still in the process of gasping while our dog who had been sleeping next to her ran, barking and snarling like a lunatic and jumped off the base of the bed, between us and the door. I still hadn't seen what was terrifying them but leapt above the bed while shouting at our dog bed, good dog, he's a little guy and his job was to let me know about the boogie man, not to fight it himself, and landed between the dog and the entrance to our tent. 
The entrance which was not only still zipped up and buckled up tight, but staked to the ground in multiple places as well, as I did every night. As my feet hit the ground, I stood almost face to face with a massive black dog. It was sitting in front of the doorway, and as I landed, and looked it in the eyes I was filled nothing short of absolute rage. I love my wife with all of my heart and here was something dangerous that wasn't welcome in our home, watching us sleep. Immediately I stepped forward and shouted at it, deep and loud, get out as I did so this thing stands up and steps towards me, and I shout again, this time clapping my hands together as hard and loud as I can, while stepping forwards again. Again this unbelievably massive dog, which is almost face to face with me height wise, steps forward. At this point we're maybe four feet away from each other, it hasn't ran off and it's clear that this thing could easily kill us both if I let it. I lunge forward and come down as hard as I can with my right fist aiming to kill it, aiming between the snout and right below the eyes. And just like that, ready to get torn to ribbons by this thing, I go right through it and it just gone. I'm completely shocked and spin around to see if somehow it slipped past me to my wife and dog, then unzip the very bottom of the front of our home rip the stakes from the earth and run a few steps out into the night, looking every direction for the thing. The moon is out and I've got excellent night vision, but I can't see any sign of it, nothing moving, no footsteps by the dark, I can't smell it, nothing. So after a minute I run back inside to make sure my wife is okay. She's still sitting straight up in bed, eyes wide open, but she's okay, and the dog is tense as hell. I finally felt my thumb screaming in pain and pouring blood at this point, the bone was still exposed waiting for surgery and the heavy bandage had gotten knocked at some point. My heart rate is calming down, and I asked her what she saw while I'm trying to stop the bleeding again with paper towels. Now, we're both extremely logical people, despite all of the weird we've seen. No matter how much paranormal stuff that you've seen, you can't fall down the rabbit hole, and it's still safe to assume that the vast majority of the weird theming you experience can be explained logically, that's the way that we both view it. But when I asked her what she saw, before telling her what I saw, she looked me dead in the eyes and said that it looked like a werewolf was sitting in our doorway watching us. I don't believe in werewolves, but I know for a fact that we both individually identified an unbelievably massive canine in our home, 10 feet from the foot of our bed and we both saw it vanish into thin air. I know our dog saw something that he identified as a threat. There were no tracks anywhere around our tent the next morning, I looked as soon as the sun came up. Even if there had been tracks. We live in the middle of nowhere, in the desert. There are no wolves, there are occasionally stray dogs and coyotes, but everything is on the small side. The only description that has consistently came to my mind since then has been Hellhound, but I can't seem to find any similar stories online. Anyone with any thoughts feel free to chime in, and I'll answer any questions I can. Sorry this is so long, I had to get it all out there. In the early 1960s there was a slew of upright canine sightings and encounters in Frederick County, Maryland. This particular account was offered by the actual witness over 50 years later. I am not making an official report because it was so long ago, and I have always brushed this incident off. At the time I was only about 8 to 11 years old, and I can't recall what year exactly, 1960 to 1963, since this was many years ago and nobody believed me since I was a kid. I was spending the summer at my grandma's house on Shank Road in Middletown, Maryland, Frederick Company, as I had for a couple of years in a row. I welcomed the summers I spent with grandma, except for the darn outhouse. If I had to go at night, I was a nuisance having to take grandma with me which meant waking her up. It was an awful part of being there. One late night I had to get up to use the outhouse, and it was stark black outside. No lamp posts or outdoor lighting lined the main lane. Grandma had electricity, but it was only for the house inside, oven, and appliances. She had a TV, a very old floor model and nobody watched it anyway, 
since there was not much TV on the Maryland airwaves back in the early 1960s. It had to be like 3 a.m. when I ventured outside. I didn't take a flashlight and I didn't want to wake grandma up for finding the flashlight or for her to walk me to the outhouse. The outhouse was located far from the main grouping of structures on the property and the main house, for obvious reasons. It was not a full moon, more like a half moon that night, but enough nighttime illumination in the sky that my eyes adjusted quickly to see the grounds. I could easily navigate my way using grandma's long and narrow flower garden as a guiding trail. My biggest fear was of black snakes and copper heads because I was warned constantly to look out for them. I made it down to the outhouse and don't even remember hearing the usual night noises like crickets or owls, it seemed almost too quiet. I was a sharp and smart kid with a great imagination, but not enough to make this story up. I felt an uncanny sensation of being watched and I started to get scared. I left the outhouse, peeked outside first, and for some reason I wanted to run back to the house, getting to safety as quickly as possible. It was a rough and long run and I tired quickly and began walking the last few hundred feet to the porch of the house. Something told me to look back where I had been, to this day I wished I hadn't. What I saw was an impossible sight. This animal stepping through the backyard of grandma's property, just past the garden about 10 feet past the outhouse. It was this upright furry creature with a dog wolf head. I have owned German Shepherds from the age of 7 so the head was almost similar to the ears and snoot of a German Shepherd dog. I stopped dead in my tracks, not believing my eyes because it was impossible. It had arms that had claw-like hands that hung out in front of it. As it turned its head and looked right at me, the eyes looked yellow and super reflective. Chills shot up my spine as it quickly walked on two legs, that looked like real dog legs bending backwards, traveling from left to right, past her garden, into the old, gravel lane, then across into the thicket of the woods where it disappeared. I heard the rustling through the weeds. It may have initially traveled from the usually full cow pasture that was up an incline, past the spring, and up to the cow pasture that was behind grandma's house. I shudder to think it was hiding behind the outhouse I was in, but that is a distinct possibility as well. Ever since that night, after being teased of the cliché of seeing the big bad wolf at grandma's house, nobody believed me and thought I made up the story for attention, like the imaginary friend syndrome of kids. From those teasing me, I just put it all behind me, buried the story forever, and never told another human being this tale until now. I just turned 62 years old this year, and I am sharing this tale with you now. Like I said, it's too late now to submit an official report, I can't even remember which year it occurred, but I will never forget that creature until the day I die. Werewolf? Lichen? Dogman? Hello y'all. After perusing this sub for a bit, I've decided to share a story. So this happened a few months ago, during the summer of quarantine. I was running through a wooded trail in my area, very good woods there, was just jogging, hoped to see some wildlife, maybe a deer or other similar animal. We have deer all around our area, so not too far-fetched. I understand this might seem odd and weird, but it's true. I was alone at the time, was wearing a black t-shirt, gray joggers and running shoes, plus a light neon orange vest to dissuade any hunters in the area, less of a serious thing more of a precaution. I was jogging, and I had earbuds and listening to some tunes. Less intelligent on my part, yes. I passed by a pond, and I slowed down because laying right there are two bodies, one looked like a coyote of sorts, another was a deer. There was a lot of flies around there, the coyote was untouched except for the killing blow to the stomach, but the deer was ransacked, and I go closer to the bodies out of sheer curiosity and neither have rigor mortis, which seemed extremely odd considering it was afternoon, around 4 p.m. and sunset that day was like 7.30ish. For those who don't know, rigor mortis is when the body stiffens up and the joints can't be moved. This happens to all animals. 
rigor mortis takes anywhere from 2 to 12 hours to set in from my memory. 2 to 6 for lower extremities, 6 to 12 for the entire body, like chest slash neck slash torso. These things were floppy. That immediately got my guards up, as that means they died within the last two hours by something large and dangerous, given the fact that the coyote's stomach was slashed open and visible. I sorta of just brush it off, but take out an earbud so I can keep an ear open while still enjoying my music. I keep running, and I start thinking I hear panting and footsteps behind me, but then my rational brain realizes, oh, that's what I'm doing. Breathing hard and running. Through a forest. With freshy killed, dead animals near me. So I started picking up my pace. What happened next stuck with me. A branch broke behind me, something that I simply ran by and didn't step on. It snapped, like something stepped on it, so I stopped panting and held my breath. I still heard panting, so my mind went oh, but it was fairly faint. I thought, well whatever is behind me will outrun me, so I come to a stop, heart pounding, pulse racing. I turn around slowly, and Therese nothing behind me, but I do see a dark haired, clawed foot coming from behind a tree. This wasn't a bear's foot, it was splayed out, with claws on each toe. There was five toes, I remember. It was also larger than my foot, I'm an American size 11 men's. I whip around and start sprinting, I hear whatever it is start running too. I get to the end of the path, near a main road with cars going up and down. I get to the edge, and turn around. There it is, some sort of dog-like slash wolf-like man, it had no tail and was on all fours with very dark brown, maybe black hair. The ears were straight up, like a Doberman's, the eyes were yellow. The animal was very muscled in general, not like super toned, but like naturally toned, I could see the muscles on it. It reared up on its hind legs, this creature was way over my head, M5.10, it was probably 7.5 feet tall I think. I'm almost certain this was a werewolf or lichen slash dogman, M from the northeast area. The Oklahoma Dog Man. It was 1991. The summer was warm. I was five. My granny had just read from the three little pigs and had put me down for a nap. I was never afraid of wolves. So the strange, hulking beast in the backyard was just a big bad wolf. That is how my mind remembers Dog Man. In reality, he was just like a walking wolf, his legs. That is what I noticed. I say he because the big bad wolf is what I thought I was looking at. This is what I remember of my very real, very disbelieved encounter. He was about 25 feet away from my window. I got up to look out, and he was in the tree line, walking around. I called for my granny, to tell her the wolf was here for the pigs. Nobody ever believed my five-year-old self. But I remember to this day, Dog Man was real and he was spotted in East Tulsa slash Katusa in the early 90s. Since I had a few people wanting to hear it I'll share. Going into it I'm about 20 to 30 minutes from the overhyped hotspot Taylor, Mississippi. I was 15 years old and me and my uncle and a few cousins were going out coon hunting about 15 minutes down the road from my house. We got there and we shot for a little bit before we turned the hounds loose. I had a black and tan that I've never seen back down from anything but when I opened the door to the dog box he wouldn't budge and his hair was rolled up all down his back. I thought maybe a coyote because he was missing part of an ear because of one of them. Then a smell hit my nose that I can't even begin to describe it was horrible. So I got curious and shined my light to a stand of pines about 20 to 25 yards ahead and got a shine that slowly started to rise and stopped at about 7 or 8 feet. And I don't know what to think so I told my uncle who then got his expensive light and shined it and we all about crap ourselves. 
What I seen was brown in color and a head that looked like a shepherd or a husky head and I swear that thing smiled at us it wasn't snarling or growling just sitting there and I guess it finally got tired of the light cause it let out this guy rattling growl that made us run in trucks and fly home. Needless to say the dog slept in the house that night. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.